Hey guys, it's Metagosis Perfect Snares where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our mnemonics playlist. In the previous video, we talked about Paget disease of the bone mnemonic. Today, we'll talk about phenytoin, the anti-epileptic medication, as well as fetal hydantoin syndrome. Hydantoin sounds suspiciously like phenytoin because phenytoin is literally made of hydantoin organic compound. The anti-seizure medications are notorious for causing folate deficiency, which can cause congenital anomalies. There are many videos in this mnemonics playlist. I hope you like them. Phenytoin, mechanism of action. It inhibits the voltage-gated sodium channels. How? By keeping the channels in the inactive state, which means sodium channels are toast, decrease conduction. Why is that? Because remember, sodium was the hero of depolarization, i.e. activation. Without the sodium channel, there is no activation and will inhibit the action potential. And you will be inhibited. Your brain will be inhibited. That's why we use it for seizure. And your heart will be inhibited. That's why we can use it for arrhythmias. Because as Dr. Conrad Fisher said, what is seizure? but an arrhythmia in your brain. What is arrhythmia? But a seizure in your heart. It's all about electrical hyperexcitability. When it comes to the pharmacokinetics, phenytoin follows zero-order elimination, which is dangerous because zero-order elimination doesn't care about the concentration of the drug. If you give me a pill that is 10 milligram, I am gonna excrete 2 milligrams per hour. How about if I give you 100? I will still excrete 2 milligrams per hour. What if I give you 1000 milligrams, 3000 milligrams, 10,000 milligrams? I will still excrete 2 milligrams per hour. A constant amount is being eliminated per unit time. And this is of course dangerous as you see because in cases of toxicity, if you give me 5,000 milligrams, for example, it will take my body so long to get rid of the drug. So surprise, surprise, it has gazillion side effects, such as hepatic necrosis. It stimulates the P450 cytochrome system in the liver, which causes liver transaminases to go up, such as AST and ALT. And of course, if it inhibits my sodium channel, it will decrease the activity of my brain, CNS depression. It also interferes with the absorption of vitamin B9, which is folate and vitamin D. Without folate, I get megaloblastic anemia, I get neural tube defects and congenital anomalies, and without vitamin D, I get rickets. If I'm young, I get osteomalacia. If I'm old, these side effects are dose dependent. The higher the dose, the worse the side effects. However, some side effects are not dose dependent, such as lupus like reaction allergic rash, and pseudolymphoma, which is not actually lymphoma, it's not cancer, it's just some lymphadenopathy with fever and rash. How does the liver metabolize phenytoin? By hydroxylation. But what if we overwhelm the liver with a high dose? Oh, I cannot hydroxylate any longer. All of my hydroxylases are currently busy assisting other customers. So, after saturating your liver, a small increase in the dose of phenytoin can equal a huge increase in plasma concentration and a severe rise in toxicity. Toxic doses can lead to coma, too much depression, cardiovascular collapse, no sodium in the heart, no sodium in the brain, respiratory depression, no sodium in the respiratory center of the brain. But hey, medicosis, why should I bother with phenytoin? Because it helps patients with focal seizures, tonic-clonic seizures, and status epilepticus. As Dr. Thomas Sowell said, there are no solutions in life, only trade-offs. Everything has side effects. Let me show you the sodium channel. It has the closed state, which is inactive, then closed state, which is resting, and then it opens and becomes active, and then it comes back again and again and again. What phenytoin does is that it keeps the sodium channel here. Hey, 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 sodium channel. You stay here, inactive and closed and useless. In the brain, it's going to calm down, which is good if you have seizures. As for the heart, it's going to calm down, which is good if you have arrhythmia. Remember the classes of antiarrhythmic medications? Class 1 is sodium channel blockers, 2 beta blockers, 3 potassium channel blockers, 4 calcium channel blockers. The mnemonic is 
smoke better pot in California. Where is phenytoin? Phenytoin is here. It's class 1B antiarrhythmic drug, just like lidocaine. Lidocaine is an anesthetic brain and it's also an antiarrhythmic heart what is seizure but an arrhythmia in my heart phenytoin mnemonic the p it can lead to pseudolymphoma the h hyperplasia of the gum gingival hyperplasia it's hepatotoxic it can lead to hirsutism and fetal hydantoin syndrome it's teratogenic the e vitamin b9 which is folate deficiency and vitamin d which equals rickets or osteomalacia o it's O order elimination, zero order elimination, pharmacokinetics. And the N because it can lead to nystagmus. Or you can say N neural tube defects. What is fetal hydantoin syndrome? To take this mnemonic to its logical conclusion, let's continue the H. Everything here is hypo. My skull size is hypo. I have microcephaly. How about the face? Small, mid facial hypoplasia, cleft lip, cleft palates. The ears are low, hypo. The neck is short, hypo. Developmental delay with hypo, IQ. Smaller absent nails, hypoplasia. Hypoplasia, not just nails, but also digits, especially the distal part of the fingers. So the proximal part is growing, but the distal part is not growing. This is called distal phalangeal hypoplasia. And if that was not enough, phenytoin can lead to congenital heart defects, such as ventricular septal defect, you will hear a murmur that is holosystolic, harsh, heard best at the left lower sternal border. Pulmonic stenosis, also a murmur, crescendo decrescendo in the left second intercostal space and transposition of great vessels. Fetal hydantoin syndrome is not the only problem that can face a fetus. There is also intrauterine growth restriction, twin twin transfusion syndrome, intrauterine fetal demise, oligohydramnios, polyhydramnios, etc. And you can learn about all of this by downloading my OBGYN high yield course, which has 10 videos cases, notes, and a humongous PDF to help you review. To learn more about carbamazepine, valproic acid, and the other anti-epileptics, download my neuropharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalist.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense.